I, on behalf of KR Mangalam University, welcome you all on this beautiful morning of July 23rd, 2022 to a webinar on importance of soft skill. People who wish to go into future should have two skills to succeed, the ability to deal with people or the ability to sell. This is beautiful line quoted by an author, Shiv Khera. Soft skills are interpersonal skills that points to qualities and behavior of an individual. Soft skills are unlike technical or hard skills. They, they relate to how you work, how you interact with your colleagues, how you manage your work and how you solve the problem. Soft skill is basically how you behave in different situations. Soft skills are indispensable and a vital skill that every individual must possess. The world is changing fast with the onset of artificial intelligence in almost every field of work. Machines are replacing and automating the task of human work that once performed by human beings. However, there is no substitute for soft skills. Hence, these are become the determinator of a job seekers to fit himself in the fast changing job market landscape and meet the hiring requirement of an organization. Communication, problem solving skills, creativity, adaptability are the few to list down as a soft skill that are highly in demand these days. To get a brighter picture of the theme, importance of soft, uh, soft skills, we have a very eminent speaker with us, Mr. Ankur Dua. Sir Dua is working as a board of director of at and India. An engineer by profession, Sir has 20 plus uh, years of working experience in telecommunication and he has been associated with organizations like Orange, Converges and at and supporting key multinational companies uh, on their network requirement. Angur Sir is currently responsible for heading service management group in India, supporting global clients with a revenue of more than US dollar 10 billions. He is al also appointed with the at and India country ambassador taking care of overall client experience to the customer and their business in India with at and He has extensive experience of working in different countries like United States, the New, New Zealand, Australia, Singapore, to name few. He has backed multiple prestigious awards in the industry and is well respected in the, as an industry leader. Other than his professional outlook, Ankur is a part of various social group and associated with the multiple programs looking after social causes. He, is currently, he currently resides in India with his wife and two sons and loves music, traveling, spending time with family and thoroughly enjoys serving the community. We welcome you, sir, and thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation for enlightening us with your views about the topic, importance of soft skills. Great. Thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Krithi, and uh, really nice uh, of you of giving the kind introduction about myself. And uh, thank you, KR Mangalam University, for inviting me to connect with your students and faculty once again to share my views on importance of soft skill, which at least has never been a topic of serious discussion in the institutes. But ironically, it is the most important and essential skill that one should have. And I'm personally very glad that uh, KR Manglam University has deliberately slotted out time and the course, which helps the, the students to be aware of this most important attribute to develop these skills. And as they would be very essential for the students in the professional world that they would be stepping in. So with that, Dr. Kriti, I would like to just share my screen, uh, if you may allow me, and I will continue with my views on the subject. Thank you, sir. Most welcome. Okay. Let me just... One second, sorry. Can you uh, see my presentation right now, Dr. Kriti? Uh, we can I can hear you if you are you are speaking. Sir, your your screen is visible, but not presentation right now. Uh, you are not. Uh, sir, your screen is visible, but not presentation. Okay, okay, all right. Let me just share my screen. Wait one second, sorry. 
ओके All right. Can you just confirm me if you are able to see yes. my screen right now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Perfect. So, uh, students and uh, everyone, if you have ever wondered, uh, you know, why I am not able to make a good connection with others, or why my plans are failing, or why I am not able to develop in trust of people, or why don't people take me seriously, or why am I always falling short of my deadlines and why i am failing to win the trust of others and at the end why i am not able to get my job done if any one of you today have any of these questions crossing your mind probably you are in the right session today now the reasons and the answers to these questions could be different and varying from person to person some reasons are in our control to manage some reasons are somewhat external but we can still influence or manage them and some are completely out of our control but the top 5 reasons that i could think of that generally leads to a, a failure of all these attributes is this the first common reason why people fail to get the work done what they are trying to do or to have things in favor of them is lack of self confidence this is the first step in the ladder which you need to take to move forward positively towards your goal first you need to have that confidence in you what you are about to do before you can even think of people that they can have the confidence in you and on what you are about to do everything gets built on this so if you have low self confidence or lack of self confidence this is the most important thing has been questioned by people that how should i measure that i have got self confidence or i am good in my self confidence because there is no measurement device that i can actually gauge myself in in that parameters so i always tell people that if you are not afraid to be wrong if you are able to listen better if you don't seek to be on the spotlight always if you don't wait for the opportunities to be handed over to you but you create the opportunities and start working on it and most importantly if you accept and trust yourself and have a self of self control a sense of self control sorry you can confidently say that i now possess good self confidence the second factor which attributes towards most failure is inability to develop common and trust i am very confident that you would all not be listening to me today so carefully or be participative in the session today if i would not be covering something that is of your interest as well or at least something that is of our common interest and this is the same reason why people will not be inclined towards listening to you till the time you bring them into a common ground where they can sense what it's in it for them and why it's important for them the third critical factor or the main factor on the failure part that happens is lack of critical thinking and we'll talk about critical thinking in the next few slides in detail but for now take it as you need to be really fact driven so that people trust in you what you are saying or what you are about to do this could be either because you have enough data points to prove what you are saying or doing or you are actually carrying enough experience or stature which will make people believe in you the fourth most important point is communication we all know what to communicate it's very easy but if we don't know how to communicate it would just overshadow on what all you have communicated so it's very important to learn the techniques on how to communicate 
and we will talk about that at length again in the next few slides. And last but not the least, manage. Now there's a difference between leading a thing and managing a thing, but if you always have a default intention to overpower someone, you have already lost the game. You cannot overpower anyone. No one is powered enough. So you need to take people along with you and majority of the time you have to give them the preference. So these are some of the top five reasons in my view that leads to the failure on some of the uh, questions that I was actually talking in the previous slides, uh, which will not turn the things in your favor. Now, the other part of the uh, uh, you know facts that I want you to know about uh, is based on the studies that has happened in the recent time. And these are actually the articles that I actually cut it out from the public uh, websites. And you can see it says the first one is nearly three in four employers say that they have a hard time finding graduates with the soft skills their companies need and educators do agree with that. According to LinkedIn, uh, which is one of the professional social website in 2019 tal global talent trend report said that 89% of the recruiters say that when they hire people they, and the hiring doesn't work out at the end of the day, it is usually because it comes down to the lack of soft skills. 54% of the employees says they have not included soft skills in their curriculum with it. And according to the paper, which is the class of 2030 by Microsoft and McKinsey, in future, 30 to 40% of the jobs will require social emotional skills. Now, while we are aware about these facts, there has been enough research that has been done about it. But the sad part is that still only 31% of the employers actually provide you the soft skill development training to their employees. So if you are a student and thinking of, you know, that I will go into the professional environment after my university and I will be given a nice curriculum to actually develop on my uh, soft skills in the future by the employer, probably you might get disappointed. So that's why I said I'm really happy that today the universities are actually deliberately putting a conscious effort in upskilling the students now itself about the soft skills, which definitely will help them in their professional world going forward. So we have spoken about soft skill. Kriti ma'am uh, just mentioned about, you know, that machines are replacing humans, but you cannot actually, you know, replace the human factor in whatever is being done. So what eventually is soft skill? You know, we keep on talking about hard skills and soft skills. So what are soft skills? What do you define soft skills? So if you flip the dictionary, uh, it says that it is a personal attribute that supports situational awareness and enhances an individual's ability to get the job done. That is what the dictionary meaning of soft skills is. But in my simple words, if I have to put it through, it's just the way you get things done. It's how you manage the situation. It's how you make the things work for you and for others. So these are, you know, some of the important, uh, you know, inputs that I actually wanted to share some driven by the facts that why soft skills are being considered as important in the industry. And it is just not in the professional world, even in your personal life, these skills will matter a lot. But when it comes to soft skills, we understood that what, what is soft skills, you know, why they are important in terms of what can, if you don't possess that, what kind of a failure you can lead to in your work that you are about to do. But what are those attributes under the soft skills that you need to possess. 
Now, there's a huge list of soft skills uh, that you can actually work upon. But based on my individual experience, uh, you know, I have truncated it to this is small list, which I think is the most important and fundamental things that anybody, whether it's a professional person, whether it's a student or anybody, you know, they need to work upon so that you can become better with anything that you are doing tomorrow. So the first thing I always prefer people to consider that knowledge is power. I remember a few years back, our ex-president, uh, Mr. APJ Abdul Kalam, uh, eloquated a statement which said, power respects power. And at that time, the power that he was mentioning was not a finance power or a resource power, but the power he was talking about was knowledge. And indeed, it's true that knowledge is power. So it's very important that when you are about to do something which matters to you, please do give a considerable thought on why, what, and how. Because if you know what you are getting into or are about to do, and you do have consciously, thoughtfully, considerably have gone into that, you can have a high chance that you will be able to achieve the intended results that you are you are expecting from yourself. Remember, knowledge will never ever let you down. So keep growing your knowledge and never stop upgrading yourself. Never ever become contented that you know enough. You will never, we will never know enough. Because when you are knowledgeable, the first thing that you will see changing in yourself will be growth in your self-confidence. And if you recollect in my list, self-confidence was the first thing which actually leads to a lot of failures. So overpower, over prepare, but then go with the flow. It will always help you. The next soft skill is innovation and creativity. And you remember I spoke about creative thinking. So this is what it all talks about. Because when you will become knowledgeable, you will become more innovative and you will become more creative in whatever you are about to do. Because you will know that what is right and what is wrong, what is good, what is bad, what is just enough and what is not enough. You will have that creative thinking in your mind always about anything that you are about to do. And I'm not just here talking about that you are about to start a project or about to, you know, do a lot of investment in certain uh, areas, even in a simple communication, you know, when you are about to talk to people, if you can just give a thought process on how you would like to approach that is also I consider as an innovation and a critical thinking that you need to do before anything that you are getting into. Because you would know what is the right thing to do. And as a student, I want you to always have the courage to challenge the status quo. I'm not saying that you should never be satisfied with what's going on, but always have the boldness and courageness that you can challenge how the things are going today and ask the questions why that is the case. While I am a true believer of always improving on what we have done in the past, but think of innovative ways and never be afraid of thinking out of the box. Never ever. Because if you continue that habit of thinking out of the box, and are not afraid of failures, as I said in the early part of my presentation, it will definitely make you stand apart from the rest of the crowd. Success might not always touch you because there is no guarantee, but the efforts that you will put in to achieve that will always make you a better person. 
And if innovation and creative thinking is not in your DNA, you are making your roadmap to success a bit more challenging. So the world is hungry for new ideas and desperate to see positive changes. So you need to strive for innovation in whatever you do. And I would even call out to the fact that it's not just what you do, but how you do it as well. So please keep that creative thinking hat always on and always keep the doors of the desire to learn open because it's never enough. The third most important soft skill is communication. And I see a lot of people fail in that. Because as I said, they know what to communicate, but how to communicate is something that they need probably a lot of practice. And if not the most important, but it is one of the most important soft skill that you need to possess. Not just communication, but clear and constant communication. So you need to be in absolute communication with your colleagues, with your vendors, with your teachers, with your, with your neighbors, with your parents, whoever. But be in constant communication and good communication. Now, some of you, you know, may have tomorrow when you will step go into the professional life, you may be into a profession that requires you to have a lot of face to face communication with the people. Some may be into a profession that requires telephonic conversation, some written communication and some mix of everything. So in addition to the communication, you also need to be conscious that however you are trying to communicate, please try to create some connect with the person you are trying to communicate. Like I give you a very practical example that uh, in my office, whenever if anybody comes to me to talk to uh, and if I'm working on the computer, I actually don't look at my screen when I talk to him or either I turn off my screen and then I talk to the person or I just, you know, put the flash down of my laptop and then I talk to the person. And the reason why I do that, because I want that person to have a confidence that when he is talking, I am absolutely listening to that person. I am not just hearing him or her. I am absolutely with him or her. I am listening to him or her and I am with them when I'm listening to them. So it's just not a one way communication. It's the way you listen to the people, the way you negotiate with the people. There could be nonverbal communication. There would be persuasions you have to do, presentations, public speaking, you know, storytelling, verbal communication and whatnot. And I always tell people that if you are in a world of written communication and, and as and when we keep on disengaging from face to face communication, the challenge of getting misunderstood becomes higher. So remember that even if you are actually having a written communication and like the way I think of that, I know that one email from my inbox can either make or break anybody's day who is reading that email. So I always intend to start off my email by writing hello and then the name of the person. There's nothing wow about it that I'm doing over here, but I have seen that people just write the email with the body of the email and that's it. It's just like they just want you to read the message. They don't want you to know. They don't want to know about you. They don't uh, want to know anything more about you other than what you are being asked to do, which is definitely is not the right way to communicate. If you're talking to somebody on the phone, yes, the subjects of discussion will come, but take a few seconds. To just ask how the person is doing. There's nothing wrong in that. It's just that it will help you to build that human factor, the emotional factor between you and the other person when you're trying to communicate. And believe you me, when you start doing all these things, it will make your objective or your collaboration with that other person very comfortable. So please, please do practice these some basic fundamental techniques which are very easy. You can do it. You may be doing it already. If yes, then please do practice it continuously and make it a habit because that's going to make you will, you know, use in the professional life as well. 
The fourth thing on the soft scale is embracing change. Now, changes are inevitable and they are bound to happen. So be prepared and expect and be ready that those changes will not always be in your favor. It is better to be mentally prepared that things will go against you, against your decisions, against your thought process, but don't let these things change you. Continue to focus on your goals and have a very clear vision on what you want to achieve. Because if you have a clear vision, it's always, it will actually shield you to whatever changes which are about to happen or which may be happening around you. And it can definitely change the way you work towards achieving your vision. But it can, and it should never stop you towards the wider objective. And one of my mentors uh, actually told me that in, if you are in any state of disaster or you think it's a disaster, just step back and frame that situation in a question that in next five years, will this matter? And you will get the answer or the gradation of disaster you are giving to that situation right there and then. The fifth soft skill which uh, I emphasize all of you is on leadership. It's very important when you are having a vision and you and others are working with you to meet those goals and visions. So, you need to be very, very effective in your leadership qualities. You are the one everybody is looking up to. So when things goes right or things don't go right, people will look up to. So you need to take everybody along holistically. And for that, it's very important that you develop an environment where people feel valued where people feel respected. As a leader, your success is defined by the success of others. The sixth important thing is have a growth mindset. And I have seen a lot of people who have a very clear vision. They have very good objectives, but they lack in this growth mindset. Replace the word failing in any statement that you're going to use going forward with the word learning. Refresh your routine. Be inspired by the success of others. Seek feedback. Use positive language. Be curious. All these things will help your brain tune into the mindset that you will always look up to something better and growing. The second last and one of the most important in my view also is problem solving. Develop a problem solving attitude, please. Don't be part of the problem. Don't be a problem creator. I always tell people, uh, you know, both personally and professionally that either you should not crib about the problems or you should do something about it to resolve it. So whenever you have, you are looking into or confronting any problem, mold your thoughts that you need to be part of the solution. It's not easy, but when you constantly practice it, you will always tune yourself, you know, that whenever the problem hits you, rather than going to step back because the problem has hit you, the first thought you will come uh, that will come in your mind is how should I solve it? What are my options available? And as they say, when in doubt, take the small step. Okay. And lastly, respect time. Things will not change overnight. And ideally, they should not. Because if it does, then probably it's not for that good and temporary. So have patience, but keep thriving for excellence. Again, it's not easy. It's better. It's easier said than done, but it's possible. And 
you once you start respecting time you know i can guarantee you that time is very reciprocative it will start respecting you so value time and the time will value you go by the time and the time will go by you give time time okay so these are my you know eight soft skills that i uh, want to just ponder upon that i personally think are very important for anybody to do anything whether you do business tomorrow whether you go in a professional life whether you work personally into any social forums or anything but if you can work upon these uh, upskilling these soft skills for yourself it will definitely make your journey more enjoyable so at the end of the day why you need it it you need it because it will improve your relationships with others we are humans we just cannot live alone or do things all alone we need people to help us achieve our common objectives and in order to improve our relationships with people these soft skills will help you as i said it will help you build confidence not just in yourself but even the people will start seeing that confidence and start building their confidence in you as well so it will be very cohesive when you have a strong relationship and people trust you and have confidence in you and it is hard to copy it is your attribute it is your skill it is your way how you do it things can be copied technology can be copied you know but the way you actually deal with the situation the way you approach people the way you interact with the way you develop the relationship the way you actually bring them together is something that is very unique to you and this will be marked as your soul uniqueness and if you have a strong relationship with lot of confidence on the people the people have on you and you have on yourself with all this unique traits i can tell you that it will make uh, your success story very strong in anything that you will be doing in the future so last but uh, the t key takeaways from my side team uh, from this session if you want to take it the first is have a good know how you know be aware of as i said be knowledgeable be aware of what you are doing and consciously do that make your mark whoever you connect whoever you talk to whoever you write to whoever you work to remember you want to leave an impression on that person on that team on that organization that they will remember you for something good so always endeavor to make your positive mark you don't want to be remembered negatively in anybody's thoughts but if you consciously attempt that this is not what my outcome would be from this conversation or this interaction or this project you will always be going out with the remembrance that people will remember you positively work on the art of storytelling and i tell it to everybody i meet whether you are starting a startup or whether you are into a business currently or whether you are into some service line or whether you are a teacher or a student please work on storytelling because it will actually create a trust of people in whatever you are saying it will make people engage in whatever you are saying and if you are able to do these two things it will actually make your objective in delivering your message to the people or to your customers or to your colleagues or to your friends very uh, sure, surely it will be going to deliver the right message what you what you want to be interpreted seek feedback and it's very important feedback is a gift but it's not easy when somebody gives you a negative feedback but take it positively and do take it because this is your genuine opportunity 
for improving in the areas where others want you to improve. So please deliberately seek feedback. Give importance, but to others as well. It's not just about you always, it's about everyone. You are a leader. You need to create people who can grow along with you. So take them along, give them the importance as well. And last but not the least, be grateful and show gratitude. Be thankful to what you have. Be thankful to what you are able to do. And be contented with what you have today with you. There will always be more than what you have today, no matter whatever that definition might be of yours. But if you are happy with what you are today, you will be able to think better maturely on the other aspects which will make you grow mentally as a leader and as a professional. So guys, soft skills is not something that, you know, you can actually say that I have, I'm, I'm absolutely, absolutely at the brim. I know everything. I am master in the soft skill. Nobody can be at that stage. Thankfully, it is always an evolving process, you know, and you need to continue doing it. And the sooner you start, the better it is. So please work with your teachers, work with your friends on all these attributes. You can practice it. You can do it. You know, just start off by tomorrow, you know, tomorrow morning, say good morning to everybody you meet. Say hello to your neighbors. Just start off with that human factor and it will begin your journey to upskill yourself on the soft skills. Remember, it doesn't come with a bow but life is still a gift. So please enjoy it and be happy. So thank you so much for patiently listening to me. Uh, I hope what I have shared makes sense and will be useful for all of you who are listening. And now Kriti ma'am, I'll hand it over back to you for any questions if you or the students have for me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, it was really very smooth going and it was so, uh, we can, can feel each and every word that you are saying that yes, we should inculcate this also. We are lagging behind somewhere. Uh, sir, going in the same rhythm, I want to just uh, know from you that as our uh, upcoming batches are uh, over with their 12th result and they are waiting for their universities uh, admissions to complete and get into the university first year. Also, we have current batches who are on their summer breaks. Uh, summer break. So, sir, what is your piece of advice that how can an individual that to a student can develop these soft skills within words oneself during this tenure of 60 days? Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Kriti. And this is a good question. Uh, and as I said that, you know, try to get into some kind of a community work if you can. Right. Because that will give you exposure to a lot of people that you probably might not have thought of getting engaged when you were in the university, right? So it will give you exposure to a different of, uh, to a people of different nature coming from different social backgrounds. And that will help you create an equation that when you are in front of that differential audience, you know, how can you actually match your mindset with their mindset and get things done together? Because when you are in university, you are sitting in between a batch of a very similar thought process students and teachers, right? But when you are in a social group outside, some people are, you know, from a very senior position. Some people are probably from a different culture, nature or background and all that. So it will help you distinguish and accept that the world is like that and you need to be together and take along and work along with the people of different culture and nature. So my humble advice to the students would be, as I said, that these things are very much that you can do in your routine. You know, even if you start off by tomorrow saying good morning to your neighbors who you have probably not spoken, I think that will help you develop your soft skills. So please do that. Definitely. I trust that my students would have noted these points and they will practice it from the day one itself.
Sir, in continuation to this, uh, as our university KR Mangalam is in process of revamping the course curriculum, what is your piece of advice to us as an educator, how we can support our student uh, with this soft skill development as a course curriculum also? Okay, so that's a very good question and uh, especially because as I said, I'm so happy that KR Mangalam University is, is putting an effort towards this subject. Uh, but generally, I have not seen universities and even corporates do that. So I, I personally think, uh, Kriti, that this particular generation, millennials, are tremendously talented. You know, for two reasons. One is, of course, they are coming with the brilliance of their brain. And secondly, they are blessed with the technology that we they have in their hands. And... But on the contrary, if you remember the time probably you and I have been through, we never used to have Google. We never used to have download a book. We used to go to a library. We used to surf, flip the cards. We used to search the aisle where the book is. And we should search the book and then hope that somebody has not torn the page of that book, which I want to read. Right. So. You know, so, but what I also see that this, the generation today, they are actually too much dependent on technology. You know, they are, you know, please take off your time from Insta, from Facebooks and whatnot, and use this technology to learn something. So my humble advice to all the teachers that please encourage the students to combine this technology with their parents and grandparents work ethics because that is very important and fundamental and i am again repeating what you just said the machinery cannot replace the human factor so please encourage please introduce this thing in your curriculum the basic work ethics that needs to be possessed minus technology it is a human thing that you need to have and that is what we had in a time when we don't have cell phones in our hand there is no elevator to go to the top you have to take the stairs so you need to get uncomfortable to become comfortable so please do not rely on technology fully and one of the interesting things that I was actually arguing with my uh, my son one one day is is because as you say uh, we have a generation gap and I am considered to be very illiterate in front of my son when it comes to technology. So uh, so he actually uh, always used to find answers on on the internet and I always used to think about the answer and tell him and most of the time I was wrong and I was wrong because I was not having that accurate number that he might be getting from internet right so but i always tell him that you be prepared and one should be prepared to listen to no one should be prepared to be rejected one should be prepared that somebody or sometimes you will get your feelings hurt you cannot just go to anybody and ask for your fish sandwich but if you go to somebody, I can definitely, I'm happy to see that effort and I can teach you how to fish, but I will never give you my fish sandwich. So be prepared for that. I hope that answers the question. Yes, sir. in a very subtle way, you have also answered one of the queries that was running in my mind that how does networking also play a very important role in developing or enhancing the soft skill? Yes, sir. Also, right. sir, I was just wondering, uh, while these hard skills are usually very specific to an individual's job profile, uh, this could could you please uh, tell me uh, or relate how a manager can build emotional intelligence, which is again one of the very significant soft skill uh, to his team. Right, that's another good question, uh, Kriti. And I must tell you that uh, you know we are lucky, or you know, maybe at times we are confronted with the kind of people which are coming from the same cultural background, specifically in a country like India. But still, in India, you have so many different cultures, you know, you cross the borders, you have different, you know, 128 languages that we speak in a country and so on, right? But when I stepped into the professional life, I, I was required to manage people who were not from Indian background, who are from somebody from France, somebody from Australia, and so on and so forth. 
and you start realizing that there is so much cultural variation that you have in these people and if you do not have an open door to accept the different cultural responsiveness and the behavior of these people you will never be able to gel along with them and if you are sitting in a, 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 an audience where you actually have different cultural uh, people sitting with you you will definitely find few people will be more vocal you know few people will be a bit silent you know but it doesn't mean that those few people who are silent they are actually not the ones who don't have ideas so as a manager what i actually used to do i used to deliberately call the people who i often see are sitting silent and i used to ask them about their opinions i used to ask them about their views and then i used to ask others what they think about their views and interestingly what has started happening because of this that the people who are actually a bit more reservative in those situations you know they start feeling confident that hey why i am sitting silent when everybody else is loving what i am suggesting so that's the kind of a emotional connect i actually developed with them that's how i made everybody acceptable to different cultures in fact people were not acceptable to me as well because i was coming from a different culture as well so that has helped us all you know together and probably have moved us forward so that would be my piece of advice in terms of emotional connect that the managers can do with the people thank you so much sir uh, the way you have uh, uh, started and uh, the way you have concluded your uh, knowledge about the soft skills is really very informative to us from the team of kr maglam university gurugram haryana we thank you sir to share your views on the topic uh, that says importance of soft skill and in, enlighten us in the simplest yet very effective manner thank you sir thank for you your so time thank you so much uh, thank sir, you uh, i have a question right? yes yes please yeah so uh, whenever we talk of soft skill or acquiring soft skill very often uh, you know our own attitudes right our own way of working comes in a way right and we are not able to do suppose i want to acquire more knowledge and i want to be very soft with others right but it is my habit to get irritated right so i end up you know uh, irritating people or misbehaving so called with invited commas i'm not intentional but so in this soft power it is just like an inertia in my life you know right so what advice you would like to give uh, how to overcome this inertia uh, you know which uh, which stops you to grow actually right right very good question uh, dr ashok and uh, indeed that is true because when we are actually grown or have been practicing this particular mindset it becomes our day two and we don't realize it and subconsciously it will kick in any time when you are trying to do something different because your brain has not been tuned to actually do things in a different way so my advice uh, would be that you need to deliberately practice this soft skill because if you are deliberately practicing it you are telling your brain that i know you will get angry but because i am deliberately doing it so i'm consciously will make sure you don't get angry with it you don't get disappointed you continue with that inertia that you are talking about so one is you need to practice this thing second is you need to just change your perspective and again it is all about training your brain it is very easy to get disappointed you will definitely be pointed out people will pull you down but if you change your perspective about the situation that is going around you it will definitely make things different and it will make things easier for you and when i say perspective you know if people are 
talking about you negatively definitely something you must be doing right you are that's why everybody is talking about you negatively right but it is important to be conscious conscious of what you are lacking conscious what is not working for you and conscious of what is not right as you said that if you are actually have a habit of being angry very quickly it is good that you are consciously knowing about it and if you are consciously knowing about it that you get angry then you would also figure it out what makes you angry what is that trigger point that pulls you up and if you work on that trigger point and tune your brain that okay this will happen i know this will happen but i will not get angry at this point that will make you practice this habit more so be strong enough to stand alone be yourself enough to stand apart but be wise enough to stand together when the time comes well uh, i have another uh, uh, question yeah. sure. so of course uh, 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 you know we are human beings and we learn best among the humans right so it is interacting with the humans which make us uh, but there is one human being whom you really respect you look with an awe you know and uh, whom we can call the mentor right so what do you feel is the role of a mentor in uh, helping someone acquire skills oh i well i will short off for words dr ashok if i am you know talking about the role of a mentor because i personally believe everyone should have a mentor in life i have been blessed to have lot of mentors in my life and you know they have shaped the way i think they have shaped the way i i work and you know those are the people with whom you can transparently share what is not working for you and they will actually be the one who will guide you in terms of why things are not working for you so in my view the role of a mentor is 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 like a teacher that somebody is having for you for life you know you can you can go to them you can go with your suggestions you can go with your opinions and mentors are actually the ones who will always be giving you the right advice no matter you like it or not but it is very important that if you have a mentor you are having more responsibility on yourself as a mentee because you can't just go to a mentor and tell me okay give person tomorrow no it is you as a mentee who need to know what you need to seek help from a mentor and if you know what you want clearly mentor role is to mold and shape and define define your path towards what objectives and goals that you have set for yourself because your goals could be very different from the goals of the mentor that you have taken but the path the best practices the mistakes the mentor have done he will or she will definitely guide you through so that your path becomes more easier i'm not saying it will be smooth it will at least become easier so if if a chance please please seek for a mentor you know you have such a wonderful teachers in the universities i will urge all the students to please have mentor uh, uh, you know ask for mentorship from your teachers and they will definitely guide you not just when you are in university but even beyond that well uh, that was uh, really wonderful uh, being together and understanding the most essential ingredient which is required i would say not to be successful but to be happy uh, because uh, ultimately what one is seeking is happiness right and the soft skills uh, definitely when you are confident when you can think differently when you can tell when with others when others are very happy when you are around you feel very good this all lead make you happy right and uh, these are the essential soft skills and uh, definitely 
I would say uh, you have a currency of your hard skills, right? But you give a meaning. What do you purchase out of that currency? This is soft skills, right? So today was uh, uh, such a great session. Not only understanding what basically soft skills are, but how to constantly work upon oneself and acquire the same, and continue to do irrespective of. whatever happens on the way thank you so much sir for joining us today and uh, i'm sure uh, today's uh, audience uh, is really uh, enlightened and will feel very happy about it and will always go back to at least one point right and that one point which i carry home is or what i'm taking away is that uh, still there is more to acquire because uh, nobody has acquired all the soft skills so no need to worry or you know that if i do not if i do not have enough soft skills because nobody has that right yeah so yeah absolutely it's a journey is trying to acquire so am i trying to acquire we are on the same journey on the same track so thank you so yeah. much sir we look forward to meet you again right and we look thank you so very much for always very enlightening discussions and i'm sure these are helping us to thank you so much sir for being with us today thank you very much thank you so much glad to be invited and its pleasure is all mine thank you going forward let us continue with the presentation of university and have a detailed insight about the kr mangalam university the presentation will be headed by ms monica khatkar thank you so much ma'am and thank you so much anku sir for such a good session thank you ashok sir that you have arranged such a nice session for us and thank you again anku sir for such a deep dive into the soft skills importance in our life i am glad glad to share here that we at the kr mangalam university are doing so many things in this direction which has a flavor of today's talk that is the soft skill importance in students life also so this is the kr mangalam university you can look how beautiful it's looking how beautiful is the architecture and the greenery around this and the slogan of kr mangalam university is empowering the youth and empowering the nation empowering the youth means if we are empowering today's youth then we can expect tomorrow's nation is more better much better apart from this apart from this if we say why to choose kr mangalam then this is the reason i am here to tell you the beauty of why to choose kr mangalam we have 3000 plus students 11 schools 10000 plus strong alumni base and a 26 acre campus plus 1 150 faculties that are well educated and a great profile we have a beautiful aesthetic lush green campus located at the sohna road we are situated at the sohna road sohna road gurugram and we are following the outke outcome based education system to transform today's young generation so that they, they can become future leaders we are following interdisciplinary project based learning at kr mangalam university broad range of minor options along with the major fields of study from physiotherapy to photograph photography are followed tinkering lab is fueling innovation here we have the qualified qualified faculty members with international experience we are following internet internship and placement opportunities at leading industries scholarship on merit basis means support excellence up to 100% we have a vibrant campus life with state of the art sports gym hostel and other facilities also we have a state of art lecture theater laboratories and studios also <laughs> and highly subsidized transport facility from most of the ncr areas 
we are giving academic support from leading universities like IBM, NSE, CSM, Siemens, Metrix, Zibia, and UIUX also. That is not mentioned here, but it's recently it is added. So students, uh, uh, you see, we just heard uh, Mr. Doha saying, it is human relationships which matter the most. And when we talk of human relationships, we talk of rich and varied interactions. How wonderful that you have 13,000, more than 13,000 human beings with you to interact with. Right? Now, yes. this is a, and we are not just saying for saying sake, because you might be feeling that I have a set of 60 uh, friends who are in my class or and I, I basically interact with them. When you visit, when you are with us, we give you lots and lots of opportunities where you are interacting with the alumni, with not only 150 plus faculty, which is on board, but more than that, right? Plus, 3,000 students, when we say it is a fact that we give you opportunities to work in different ways with different set of students so that you have a great chance of rubbing your shoulders with someone like you and someone not like you because it is We endeavor in this campus with this uh, uh, kind of curriculum uh, we have for you. So when we talk of curriculum, let's go to the next slide. Now, if you see uh, the next slide, you might be wondering, these are engineering and technology courses, management and commerce courses, architecture, legal studies, journalism, humanities, education. So you may say that well, this is everywhere in every other university, right? So what is so special about it? So let me give you at least two very wonderful special features which make us distinct from us. One is that we are way ahead of what others For example, the new education policy of education talks about that uh, you can make your own curriculum you can make your own degree, you can choose. So we are giving this choice to our students right from the very beginning. You may join us in the uh, school of you know, journalism or legal studies or basic applied sciences or education. But suppose you have interest in some other field. You have interest in agriculture also. Or you have interest in... Uh, uh, you know, hotel management or management. We give you a chance to select at least one paper every semester of your choice. So we give you the freedom to have electives. This is what makes us different. That means with us, you are not into watertight compartments because knowledge cannot, right? And we cannot grow like that. That would only help us to acquire certain kind of technical skills, right? Not the ability to 
tap those techniques for that. So this is one advantage we have. The second advantage, uh, which uh, I would like to say is, we, we feel we, we very much possess is, if you see the first law that says, engineering technology. So we, of course, have uh, BTEC in computers and electronics engineering. We have BTEC in computer science and engineering. But if you go further, you will see we have BTEC in uh, uh, computer science and engineering with AI, with machine learning, right? Now, this is another element, okay? Then see the other element. You will see it is written with the academic support of Symmetrics and IBM, with the academic support of Zibia, with the acad in association with the, uh, you know, Imaginex, okay? With the uh, 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 support of Siemens, what does it mean? What does it mean? You see, if you take Siemens, you take Zubia, you take IBM, what are they? They are industrial giants. Industrial giants. So we are teaching you all this with the help of industry itself. Now you might be wondering, other universities also give some kind of internship exposure, right? Okay. But our internship is very different. Apart from the internship, we have specific regular papers. So there are maybe 16 to 20 papers by IBM or by Zibia or by uh, imagine X, right? You and you have to literally appear in those papers, but these papers are taught by the academia industry experts. So IBM, we know very well, has developed many softwares. So you are given exposure to that. Siemens has developed very many softwares, the leading softwares to develop the prototypes and all that in the auto industry. So you will be learning that from the experts from the industry itself. So two advantages. One over here is that you have the exposure right from the very beginning of the industry, right? Second is you are exposed to the latest in the industry. So that means you are not at all disconnected with the industry. So your transition from the university to the industry is so smooth, right? Without hurdles. You don't have to worry about it, whether my employer would arrange for certain kind of trainings for me to acquire the skills which I could not acquire in the university. So that makes us different in this way. Third point about our collaborations is that these papers, you earn credit, suppose you qualify one paper of IBM or Siemens or uh, imagine so then uh, 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 these papers are internationally, are, we give you credits, so they are internationally recognized. So the industry all over the world would prefer you over other candidates because you have these kinds of credits to your advantage, right? So this is what makes our curriculum different from other universities. Over to Matt.
this slide is over. I have already taken it. Next slide. Yes. Ma'am, you want to say? Yes, sir. So we have a Yantra Robotics Lab also in the Kyamanglam University. And for this, we have a tie-up with IIT Mumbai. The teachers and students from IIT Mumbai came here and our student goes there on the merit basis, generally. Apart from that, we have a smart ashram also. So regarding this uh, uh, robotics, drones, right? Yes, sir. Uh, why, why do we have uh, such kind of things? So that uh, so that students can uh, can take uh, exposure to the prime universities, prime institutions, and uh, just go through the environment over there and can look how they are working on innovation ideas. So we want to give you the latest in technology. Yes, yes, sir. Right. We want okay. Like for example, uh, uh, when the students in the university are working with the drones. It's not like a toy that you are just flying it and all that, right? Uh, there are various projects which are being carried out by with the help of uh, drones. Um, for example, uh, 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 our university uh, conducted uh, uh, the pollution study at various levels of the environment. Uh, in the vicinity of the university with the help of drones, right? Uh, then at present, uh, uh, our students, that's why we say multidisciplinary, because here disciplines, knowledge of various disciplines is required. So our agriculture, it's majorly agriculture project, but uh, other uh, uh, schools are also involved in that. Uh, they are doing now a study of the water resources in the vicinity of the university. So we are in program and uh, uh, surrounded by many villages and they are involved uh, for, in agriculture. So if uh, we help them to understand uh, what is the status of the water table or what is the status of various kinds of water sources which are available to them. And uh, uh, so how much help it is to the society and simultaneously this works as a great experience for our students uh, to tap the latest technology for giving solutions uh, to the uh, society at large, right? So uh, this ashram which you see over here is, if you had seen our video, you might would have seen that uh, uh, the state of the art uh, classroom, smart classroom, technology to the hilt, right? But uh, as we learn today, it is not the technology alone, but uh, connecting with your uh, roots, right? Understanding the sustainability, right? And developing new kinds of models is what is exactly required uh, by the institutes of higher learning. So we have, uh, you know, he says we use uh, very innovative categories. So we have a smart ashram. So this ashram, uh, 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 most of the architecture of uh, this is done by our students. So here you have a great blend of technology and uh, the nature and the environment. And this is what exactly is needed to understand the sustainability goals to which India is a signatory. And we all are striving uh, to fulfill them by 2030. 
and our new education policy also is talking about uh, uh, to work strenuously for uh, the realization of the sustainability goals. Next, ma'am. Yes. We at the KR Mangalam University also looking towards the life beyond academics. We are industry connect programs also. That means that student can check what kind of softwares, what kind of technologies are using in today's industry and they can be in touch of that. We are following mentor mentee programs as sir also focused on that, how important the mentor mentee session is, how mentor mentee program. Here we resolve the queries and problems raised by the students. We have the community connect club and societies also. Their students can do cultural activities, extension activities, and other activities. As you know, students also uh, want a life beyond the academics, beyond the study. So this is the part of that life, which is uh, scheduled for uh, collecting some memories in college life. Uh, well, uh, this is actually, you see, there is one, when, whenever we talk of curriculum, there are two kinds of curriculum. One is the manifest curriculum, which you see in terms of, uh, let's go to that slide, which talks, let's go to three, four slides back, please. Here, yes. See, what we... Uh, uh, do over here is those aspects of your personality development of your growth or those skills which are really we call the life skills which cannot be developed in the classroom are ensured over here through various kind of uh, activities which are a part of our curriculum. So, uh, as Mr. Dua also said, Community Connect is one way in the university. You still have, you know, people of your kind mostly. But society is one where you come across people of all kinds the real inclusion, the real diversity, the real issues also. So in our community connect programs, when we go out into the community, right? We, when we interact with the community, we are developing those soft skills which are really required to win in life. And this mentor mentee program, I want to uh, speak very clearly is that uh, yeah. when we enter into university, we are coming from a very protected world of school. And here you are taught in a very different manner altogether. You have to independently handle many of uh, the assignments, right? Nobody is doing a micromanagement of you as is done in the school, right? But to help you in this process, right from the first day itself, we assign you a mentor. So a group of 15 to 20 students has one mentor, right? To this mentor, you can go for any kind of guidance, any personal issue, academic issue, issues related to university, issues related to going along with your colleagues, issues related to how to go about and finally, issues related to interview, issues related to preparing for exams, issues related to um, how to approach a, a industry, how to apply, everything is done here under the mentor mentee program. The clubs particularly, we have more than uh, 
around with, uh, 30 clubs over here. These clubs are very specifically to take care of your interests, your passions. You have a writer's club and it, these clubs are run by you. So the agenda is set by the students. Program is set, of course, with the help of faculty by the students, right? So that your, those aspects which are not otherwise taken care of. And then you are free to choose any club you feel like in your tenure. So this is how we take care, we ensure that we help you groom your total personality. Next slide. Ma'am, please explain. Yes. So we have the tie-ups with these universities also, where students can get international exposure. Students are going for internships and all. This is the Middlesex University of London, University of Houston, University of Florida, and TAS. University of Melbourne also, where students are getting exposure. Very well, good environment is there, and they are coming and going back for the internships and overall exposure. Apart from that, I, I would like to add the honorary professors which are taking lectures in the university. These are the students which are doing very well in their career, which prove, they prove a very good entrepreneurial skills and they are doing very good in their career. They are earning crores, they have set up a startups and others are doing jobs. Uh, well, uh, if, uh, if I talk uh, about the annual annual package, highest package, then 24 lakhs per annum is the highest package. I mean, you know, Anand is getting that. Yes, sir. The proof of the pudding is in eating, right? Yes, sir. And uh, ultimately, we join a university, then we think of the placement. What would I get in that? So these are just four examples, right? The uh, examples are not confined to four alone. We are just giving you a highlight. So our uh, student, Abhinav Anand, he was a BTEC CSC student with us. Uh, he uh, is uh, right now working as, uh, uh, you know, uh, cargo uh, at Cargo Flash as a network engineer and is drawing a 24 lakh uh, package. If you see Dipanshu, he was a with us uh, MBA student. He is uh, uh, right now uh, in Israel Embassy of Canada, in Canada. And he's a risk analyst. Juren, if you see, he was uh, our uh, BI architecture student and he is uh, joined uh, the, we know Ivy universities are the universities which we look forward, anybody will look forward to. So he has joined uh, Ivy League University with a scholarship of uh, US dollars, 15,000. Right, and uh, uh, no, it is one lakh five thousand, fifteen thousand. Sorry. Then, if you see Muhammad Yunus, he is uh, uh, of uh, entrepreneur, and uh, he is the founder and CEO of uh, uh, Adun uh, Nikhi, and uh, uh, at present. Uh, he is uh, working, uh, drawing, uh, earning quite a bit, right? Now, what we see down below is, uh, are their feelings? What are they speaking? What they learned in care, right? So next slide, please. Yes, ma'am. So if I talk about the placement highlights, 
highest package earned is 24 lakhs per annum. And we have visited recruiters, around 400 plus recruiters visited Kyar Mangalam University. Total offers bids are 600 plus and student placed up to 90%. That means key students which are coming here, uh, they are getting placed, 90% students are getting placements in the Kyar Mangalam University. Other 10% remaining are uh, some, some have chosen their higher studies and some have started their own businesses, etc. So our top recruiters are Paytm, Sun Pharma, KPMG, India Bulls, Medanta, and TSC. So these are the highlights of companies which are recruiters at KR Mangalam University. As I mentioned in earlier slides, HCL Technology, CP Global, Universal, India Bull, HRF, EBS, OYO, Fusis. These all are the recruiters that visited and offered a job for Kyar Mangalam students. Apart from that, we have a very, very simple process of admission at Kyar Mangalam University. First student has to meet the admission officer or he or she can make a query on the website also. Then student has to fill the application form, register with us, and appear for the admission test. After registering with us, our admission team will ask for appearing for this admission test. And after that admission test, student will appear for a personal interview. Personal interview is arranged for a comfortable zone for the teacher, for faculty, and for the students. So sometimes it happens the student cannot perform very well in admission tests, or uh, he he might be in a different zone. So we the interviewer can feel what kind of course he or she wants to take. Sometimes it becomes a counseling session also. So it is very fruitful for us and for students also. After appearing for personal interview, then he has to pay fees for the admission. And this is the whole simple process of admission. Uh, if you are coming through UAT, that is university eligibility test, right? Okay. Uh, now it has been started under new education policy. Then you need not go for our university test. You would be taken on fast track. Other than that, if we compare Kyan Mangalam University with other universities' fee structure, then it is very economical. You can check here the three-year program and four to five-year program of Kyan Mangalam University and other universities' comparison. That we at the Kyan Mangalam is offering one lakh ten thousand fees, and other technical universities are offering one twenty-five thousand, one and twenty-five thousand, and four to five-year technical program. We have at four lakh uh, one lakhs forty thousand price and others are one seventy five. So this is the this is the comparison slide of fees. Now if I come upon the scholarship process, so we are offering deserving UG students a scholarship of up to hundred percent. We are offering fast track admission to do, those students which are above ninety percent, which are uh, having higher than 90% or 90% in their 10 plus 2. So 15% scholarship is offering, uh, are offering for siblings. It is applicable to all siblings, including the first child admitted to Kyar Mangalam University. Suppose your elder brother is here, then he will not be able to take this scholarship, but your sibling will, take, uh, will be able to take the scholarship. Then up to 50% scholarship for sports quota, 15% scholarship for children of defense personals, we are offering and special finance aid to students from the Kyar Mangalam schools. If the school, uh, if the student is from Kyar Mangalam school, then he will be given a special financial aid. And we have a fast track admission via CUET 2022 test. As such has focused on that, that we are uh, skipping the personal interview session. So you can get the admission directly by the uh, written test also. So this is the phone numbers for any inquiries. If you have any query, you can call, call us on this number. You can mail us. We are happy to help you out there. Looking forward. 
thank you so much for being with us today, right? Uh, what we would like to do is that you can, of course, call us and talk about it. Uh, but best would be that you visit the campus, see by your own eyes, have a feel of it. You know. And uh, I would say you visit our labs. You see how uh, rich they are. You visit the classroom. You meet the faculty. Visit the hostels. Best would be meet the students and learn from their experience, right? So uh, thank you so much for being with us today, right? And we look forward to see you in the campus. So, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we once again like to reiterate our thanks to Mr. Dua and all the people who were involved from the university side to make this webinar a grand success. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for arranging such a nice session on soft skills. Thank you so much. Tight, sir, we can end the session. Mr. Tahir. Mr. Tahir, let's end the session. If there is someone from the technical team, please end the session. Kriti ma'am, if you could ask Mr. Tahir to end the session. Uh, I'm trying to connect him over call, sir. Session of Session of Sure.